it, it's not fair. I mean, there's some people that will reject it because of the personalities behind it, because they reject the personality. They reject those people because they don't have trust in those people. But I think you have to look at it for what it is. Just shield yourself from those that, that came up with it. If it's good for the country, it's good for the country. Mm -hmm. and, and it should be supported. Uh, uh, the encouraging part I, I've seen in it that is, is that it depends on Kenyans. I mean, self-reliance is, is, is that pathway that, that the United States is walking with Kenya on. I mean, this is not, we're not the solution to Kenya's problems. Mm -hmm. The people of Kenya are the solution to their, to their problems. And, and they're, and they're going to make this happen. I really believe that. Mm -hmm. And you've also been quite active in politics back in the U.S. for quite a significant time. And just recently, we had uh, the U.S. Secretary of State, that is Mike Pompeo, you know, use provisions uh, in law, key among them, the foreign yes. uh, relations and uh, related uh, programs appropriations act to bar former Attorney General Amos Wako mm -hmm. from uh, stepping, uh, you know, into the U.S. Right. And you described that, or he said that it is owing to significant corruption. Maybe would you describe to us what is this your government felt were significant acts of corruption? Well, I think it was it was adequate enough for us to make the declaration, <laughs> and um, and so we we don't take we take it seriously. Uh, the reason we take it seriously is because uh, the thievery, as you know, I call it, is that's being taken place is significant. It's the value of that of that eight hundred billion is the cost of the big four. Mm -hmm. And, and, if, and, and if the big four is good for the people, no matter what you think about the politics of it, if that's good for the Wenatchee, it needs to be supported. And if what's, what's taking that from them is this thievery, we have to take a strong stance against it. We're going to continue to do that uh, un, un, under the law that, that we have provisions for. Yeah. Uh, there, there are many things that we do that we don't talk about. One, I say we, we don't educate thieves. We don't let them know how we're going to come after them. But I will say that we are investing heavy in, in with, with our, 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 our financial resources, with yeah. our people, to, to train prosecutors to be better prosecutors, to train investigators to be better investigators, to, to help the judicial system shore up these systems law and order. We're going to keep doing everything we can to give that opportunity for prosperity back to the Wenatchee. A similar move was made in 2010. Mm -hmm. Flash forward to 2019, yet another declaration from your government to bar the same individual from going mm -hmm. to the U.S. What is different about it this time as compared to 2010? Well, no, I think this is just a matter of the process. This is, this is what we're allowed to do by law. And, uh, and, and some things just don't, uh, they, they don't happen quickly. Mm -hmm. It just takes time. And so, uh, again, we're, we're, we're uh, they're, they're, they're people that we can talk about, there's some we can't, uh, but we're just gonna keep pushing uh, to, to hold people accountable. And talking about corruption, uh, sir, there is, uh, you've been very vocal about it mm -hmm. ever since you landed in Kenya. Uh, where do you think are the gaps when it comes to the way and manner through which we are, you know, mm -hmm. approaching this fight against graft? Well, I think, I, I, let's go back to BBI. Mm -hmm. There are some suggestions in BBI that I think need to be debated, they need to be talked about. Uh, some that, that I think many find interesting is the 5%, uh, you know, for whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. uh, that could be a little cottage industry in itself in Kenya, right? Yeah. Uh, but if it's successful uh, and, it, and it brings about this, uh, this transparency and accountability, it's a, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. My research informs me, sir, that you have a lot of uh, passion for empowering rural communities and rural areas. Yeah. Why? Well, I think it's about opportunity. I think um, y you, you find people in the rural communities that have uh, what I call grit. They have that toughness because they've had to overcome. Uh, no one's given them anything. They've had to survive on very little. And I think uh, with just a, a little more opportunity, they can do great things for this country. And I think I, I, I speak about those in the rural area, but I also speak about the youth because I think they're in the same situation. I mean, 70% of the population is 30 years and younger. And, and these are, this is one of the greatest, you know, Kenya has all of the resources that it needs yeah. to be great. And, and, one, and the greatest resource is the people itself. Mm -hmm. And those young people 
our, 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 our people that we've got to focus on. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to care for them. We've got to give them these, this opportunity because they're ready, to, they're ready to go. They're ready to work. As a project would be, uh, an infrastructure project, we call it shovel ready. Well, these, these young people are ready and uh, they can contribute so much to, to, uh, to this economy that, this, that they, they can be the reason that this con economy is rejuvenated and booming. As far as the diplomatic caucus in Kenya is concerned, what is that thing you feel should be and will be your contribution at the end of your tenure? Well, I, I believe, um, I think first you have to be able to cast a vision that uh, is big and attainable. And I believe, uh, I've, I've always said that I, I don't believe Kenya should uh, any longer be just a beneficiary of foreign aid. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the United States is going to walk with Kenya on that pathway to self-reliance to where they're not just a beneficiary but a benefactor. I believe that they can create enough prosperity for East Africa that they can not only take care of themselves but take care of their neighbors and be generous to their neighbors. And so uh, I think first you have to, you have to believe in the people, you have to believe in the country. Okay. Uh, I think um, at that, besides that, you just got to work hard and take some bold stands against things that get in the way of that. And talking about bold stands, uh, uh, Kyle, a section of the political class in this country are not exactly too fond of you. Uh, what do you have to say about that? I wouldn't know who they are. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I, uh, as far as, uh, and, and you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to continue doing what I think is right. I'm going to stand up uh, ag against this thievery. Uh, maybe, maybe those are some of the people mm -hmm. that uh, that don't, you know, don't like the stands that I'm taking. But I'm going to do that because this is about justice. This is about being a friend. This is about the United States being the best friend that Ken Kenya could ever look to. And uh, and and it's 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 my it's my job to make sure people know that we're there to help them. Mm -hmm. and, and, we're, and, and we're not, we're not just, you know, we're not just dishing out money. We're working side by side, the Kenyan people, yeah. to, to, to allow them to do this on their own. Mm -hmm. We've been partners, that is Kenya and the US, when it comes to the fight against terrorism. And we've made quite uh, some significant uh, strides. But moving forward, what are those things you feel we need to embrace uh, to totally eradicate terrorism from this region? Well, I think you, we come back to youth again. I think you need to give youth opportunity. Um, they, they need the opportunity to engage their talents and their gifts uh, for good. And for, and for creating something positive. And, uh, and, and if we do that, they're gonna be less likely to turn to, uh, to violent extremism. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, um, you know, there, a, a rejuvenated economy mm -hmm. does more good than anybody knows. Yeah. And I think, uh, especially for young people. Okay, let's uh, very quickly, before we embark on carving the cart, uh, the, the, the Turkey, uh, the Turkey, ICPD Plus 25, the conference that just concluded in Nairobi, and one that uh, the U.S. has been a uh, uh, financier in, in some of the uh, key areas, like reproductive health, made some resolutions moving forward. But when you look at maternal health, yeah. or generally the big four agenda, mm -hmm. where health falls under, what exactly do you feel the country needs to do? What do we need to invest in to fully realize universal health coverage? Well, I think, for, first of all, we are the largest contributor. Yeah. And, uh, and I think uh, most people know that. Uh, sometimes we don't tell our story real well. Uh, you know, we put, 700, we put $700 billion into PETFAR mm -hmm. and uh, saved generations. Uh, we're, we're very happy that we were able to be part of that. And so, uh, but we haven't always talked about it. Um, and I think uh, we, we've had success with maternal, uh, you know, uh, health care. We, we've, uh, uh, especially in certain regions, we've, we've shown statistically that we, we've had great success. Um, universal health care is, a, is a achievable. It is. It's attainable. And, uh, and we're going to continue to invest heavy. Uh, and one of the things we're doing that uh, is not even... It's kind of off the books. It's, it's not even recorded is 
We have now the seventh health attaché in the world located here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have one of the top uh, cancer uh, specialists here in, in, in Nairobi on our team. And uh, we, are, we, are, we have made appeals to the diaspora in the United States, those healthcare workers to come back to Kenya and to live here, bring their families back here. And that costs the United States government absolutely nothing mm -hmm. other than our leadership. But it's going to bring billions of dollars of impact, positive impact, back to Kenya. Okay. So we're we're all in. Right. For healthcare. All, all in. That is what the ambassador has to tell you, and especially any stakeholder out there who is involved in this process of realizing universal health coverage in the country. Finally, finally, what's your message? of a thanksgiving to Americans who are watching us uh, today, to Kenyans watching us yeah. today? Well, it's, uh, this, is, this is a great, you know, this was a, one of the best decisions by Abraham Lincoln, who comes from, you know, my state of Illinois yeah. in 1863, October, you know, 3rd. And uh, the interesting part about that is when he made this a national holiday, he did this at the request of a woman. <laughs> and, uh, and so Sarah Hale, just, uh, just the week before this, had been writing to the president for 15 years. Mm -hmm. She was 74 years old, the editor of a, of a magazine. And, uh, and, and he, he responded to the letter, and he made it a national holiday. And so I think it's only fitting that we're thankful. We're seeing, we're mm -hmm. seeing, we're seeing even, even yesterday, where women are stepping up to lead. And, you know, we as men, sometimes we, we need to listen a little more. Yeah. And uh, you never know what will happen. Some great, <laughs> great traditions can start. And I think being thankful is, um, there's a lot of power in being grateful and thanking God for everything that he's given us. Mm -hmm. And so it's a good time to sit and sit back, reflect. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next day is bound to be better if we're thankful. Absolutely. Each day gets uh, better than the previous. And right now, I'd like to invite my co-host, that is Shiksha Arora, who will be joining us to carve the turkey. Remember, this tradition is courtesy of a request by a woman, and therefore we cannot <laughs> exhaust tradition without having your presence with us, a Shiksha. So you can take us uh, through the process of carving sure. a turkey, because I've seen it happen a couple of times, but I don't think I can do it. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's not that difficult. I've, I've uh -huh. got a... Um, Somebody said, why can't you just cut it? I said, well, you just cut it into pieces. And, and, that, and we've seen that done at the yeah. butcher shop. But sometimes people like different parts of the turkey. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So if you like the dark meat, you would take, uh, and I'll do it on this side. Okay. Uh, you would like uh, the, the leg. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a little easier if you just grab it. Right. So here is the dark part. Dark meat on the leg. Okay. And uh, but then if you like the uh, the thigh. The, the thigh. Yeah. It's the juiciest. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it is the most moist. You're right. Right. And uh, there we go. Oh, that looks good. And White do, turkey. White turkey. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's uh, it's it's resonant to the United States. Mm -hmm. It's it's the bird that comes from the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, and then if you like the white meat, there you go. There you go. Do you do this every year? Uh, yes, normally. And and you know, it's it's interesting. You know, my wife, my wife uh, will cook the turkey. Okay. But I guess it's kind of a Maybe it's a bit chauvinist. The man always the turkey. <laughs> I was just going to be like, is it a man's <laughs> world? Yeah, for so some, do I, I don't know that? why. I don't know why. They, they, I mean, you know, my wife always cooks the turkey, right. but she says, okay, you need to cut it. I, here's why I think. Mm -hmm. okay. There's risk involved. Mm. And uh, maybe, maybe the, the man's a little more, you know, risk it, you know, less risk adverse. And because you, because you can really make a mess of this. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they can cook it, and then if you mess it up, they can just blame you. <laughs> so, there, so there's it a good, yeah. Either way, there's a risk involved. <laughs> That's right. Either way, there yeah. is a risk involved. And mm -hmm. as you said, this is uh, an annual celebration that usually happens in the U.S. And in the course of time, they have always observed a certain theme. What, what's, what's the theme around it this year? 
could there be anything other than I, Thanksgiving? I don't think there's anything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's real simple. Okay. Remember the things that you can be grateful for and thank God for your blessings. Right. And is it, this is actually your first time being away from the United States of America, right? For Thanksgiving? Uh, no, actually, no, I, I, I've, been, uh, I've been actually here a couple of times. Right. Yes. But uh, as the ambassador, yes, my first time. Uh -huh. And uh, happy to celebrate here. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, even today, we're going to be with some of, our, some of our people from the embassy, some of our Marines okay. that are away from home and uh, make it feel a little bit more home for them. So with your Kenyan family. That's right. Uh, all right. And thank I, you so much for joining us. Yeah, you know, thank you so much for mm -hmm. joining us. And, Thanks uh, for having me. I'm a fan of the dark part, so <laughs> let no one touch this <laughs> moving forward. Uh, any other person can there's, have any part. There's two. No, they, they still You're it. good. You're I'll good. have both of them. <laughs> I'll have both of them. But thank you so it's much for watching. Samuel. It's Thanksgiving. Sharing is caring. That's right. Mm. It begins with self. <laughs> Gratitude <laughs> begins with self, right? You cannot pour from an empty cup, can you? Oh, well, you cannot pour I'll from an empty cup. I'll let you discuss that one. <laughs> yes, yeah, so thank you so much, sir, for thank you coming for and uh, for sharing that much needed insight. Right. When even it comes to the nature of our relations with the U.S. even yeah. moving forward. And thank you for watching this part of the show. We are not yet done. Remember, this happens really between good. 10 a.m. or 9 a.m. all the way till 12.30. So we've got a lot of uh, information lined up for you which will be coming up after these messages. Samuel, do you want something? Yeah, yeah, sure.